everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be looking at a cool little trap called the fishing pole, and it derives from the Roy Lopez opening. As many of y'all know, the Roy Lopez opening is one of the most common openings that you'll see, so if you do play a lot of chess, especially playing as black, you're probably going to have a lot of opportunities to try this out on your opponents. And also, what I like about the trap is, even if it doesn't work, as you'll see, we're going to go over a lot of different variations today. You're not going to have a bad game. You're still going to have a lot of good opportunities to equalize. And there's also a lot of traps that you can find within the fishing pole that even if your opponent doesn't fall for the first trap, you can employ some further traps later on to see if he can hang himself. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Roy Lopez starts with pawn to b4. We respawn pawn e5. White develops his knight. We continue knight c6. White brings his bishop to b5, attacking our knight. We're going to bring our knight to f6, and white's going to castle. Now, a lot of beginners, just thought I'd touch on this, will say, you know, white would, why would white castle here? Why wouldn't he bring his knight to c3, defending his pawn? Well, technically, his pawn is defended. After knight to e4 capturing, then the rook can come to e1, and they're going to get their material back. So a lot of times you'll see, especially at higher level play, you'll see white simply just castle and that's what we're going to look at today if white castles on this move from here black can simply do the move knight to g4 now this move looks kind of funny at first but we're going to get into how it's actually very very dangerous for white one of white's biggest things that he's going to want to do is try to get this knight out of there obviously the knight's putting a lot of pressure on h2 on f2 and there's nothing he can do about it right now so one of the most common things you'll see is simply pawn to h3 obviously trying to kick this knight away seems like a good idea from here though we're simply going to reinforce this knight and give it up as a sacrifice and hopefully white will hang himself by doing this if someone has not seen this trap before more than likely they will go ahead and take this piece that you've given to him when we recapture what we've done is two things. One, we've unleashed our rook on this h file, just bearing down. There's nowhere for the king to go right now. And we're also attacking this knight. If white decides to move his knight, it's actually going to be game over for white. Black's going to win right away. As you can see, let's say white tries to retreat his knight to e1. Obviously, right now, white is up in material. But from here, we can bring our queen to h4, and black has won the game. There's nowhere for the king to go. We can come to h2, h1 on our next few moves. If he tries to bring his pawn out, let's say on the f file, to give his king room to move, we can simply on our next move just bring our pawn to g3. And now there's absolutely nothing the white king can do. If he tries to move his rook to give him room, we can simply come to h1. If not, we can simply come to h2. It's going to be checkmate. So if he does move his knight, just know it's going to be checkmate. So. Obviously, you may not always see him take his knight, so we'll go ahead and take a look at a lot of different variations if he doesn't take his knight, and then we'll look at what happens if he doesn't even move his pawn at all. So from here, if we bring our knight to g4, and he comes to h3, and we reinforce with pawn to h5, you may not see him take. He may think, hey, wait a minute, this could be a trap. He may have seen the fishing pole and say, hey, this is a trap. So you may see a few moves. One of the moves you may see is simply someone who's very confused, and they just want to go ahead and start taking material. They know that you probably have something up your sleeve. They may just go ahead and take on c6. This is the exchange variation in the Roy Lopez, so a lot of players are familiar with it, so they may go ahead and continue along their strategy. Right now, there's nothing too much that black can do, so they're going to continue on. From here, we can capture on c6, and then from here, same thing. If he wants to take, we can continue along with our plans. But you may see something like pawn to d4. Obviously, they're trying to counter in the center. From here, we can recapture. If he recaptures with his queen, we can recapture with our queen. If he does recapture with his knight, we can just simply retreat our knight. Obviously, now our attack is no longer working. But as you can already see, we're even in material, and our development is completely fine. We can develop our our light square bishop we can castle queenside which is very common in the exchange very open in the Roy, exchange variation in the Roy Lopez there's nothing bad about our game here and that's why I was going over earlier even if the trap doesn't work and he doesn't fall for it black's still going to have a very good game which is something you definitely want to keep in mind so we'll go back a, a few moves 
and let's say he doesn't capture on c6. Let's say he develops his knight to c3, very common move you may see. From here we can simply bring our knight to d4, threatening this knight here again, basically putting a lot of pressure on white. From here he may capture, we can recapture attacking his knight. If he wants to continue, obviously he can't bring his knight to let's say d5 because then we can just move pawn to c6 attacking both pieces. Let's say he brings it back to e2. We can simply start attacking the bishop. If he moves his bishop back to a4, then we can set up another little trap here, basically giving up our d4 pawn to his knight. So what we can do is we can simply bring our knight back to e5, basically sacrificing our pawn on d4. But if he does take on d4, we can simply attack and then when he moves, we can simply take, if he does recapture with his queen, which he probably will, if he captures with his pawn, his king side's going to be wide open, then we can simply start attacking his bishop, and his, bash, his bishop's going to be trapped. Now he could try a move like pawn to e5, attacking our rook here, but as soon as we move it, his bishop's still going to be on the run, and as soon as he moves, boom, we've trapped his bishop here. So just a small little thing that you can continue to apply pressure and even if they don't fall for the trap you can still have a decisive advantage so we've taken a look we'll go back a few moves here we've taken a look at what happens if he develops his knight to c6 but what if he doesn't even move his pawn to h3 we'll go back a few moves he doesn't have to move his pawn to h3 he may simply he could bring his knight to c3 now. From here, we can bring our bishop to d6. Obviously, eventually, we, we, yes, we are blocking off our light square bishop, but more than likely, we're going to bring our light square bishop to a6 or b7 and get it involved later on. But right now, we're defending our pawn on e5 and developing our bishop so that we can castle kingside. From here, you may see him bring his pawn to h3. Or you may see him simply bring, let's say, bring his pawn to d3. If he doesn't even want to worry about h3, even later on, from here we can simply castle kingside. He can develop his bishop. As you can see, we can always bring our knight back to f6 if we want to. We have a completely fine game. Our development is fine. The trap didn't work, but that's not a problem. That's one of the key things you need to know about this, is even if the trap doesn't work, you're still going to have a fine game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching, everybody.